Joining us now is Paul Craig Roberts. But before I go to him and talk about what's happening to the world in terms of economics, in terms of lurching towards war, I want to let you know that for the first time we've had have X2, Survival Shield X2 on sale. It's the first time we've ever had it on sale. And that sale is 17% off plus free shipping. So normally it's twenty nine ninety nine. You now get it for twenty four ninety nine plus with the free shipping. Uh, without free shipping, you would have paid thirty eight dollars for it. So now you're getting it for twenty four ninety nine. This is a sale that's only going to run through next Monday. If you order it now, within the next two days, you get guaranteed delivery by Christmas. And again, that's uh, Survival Shield X two available at InfoWarsLife.com on sale for just the next week. Now, joining us is uh, Paul Craig Roberts, and of course, um, he was the Assistant Secretary of the Treasury during the Reagan administration. Uh, he was famous as the co-founder of Reaganomics, uh, an author of many books, uh, eight, it says right here, eight different books, a PhD in, uh, from Georgia Institute of Technology, University of Virginia. And I wanted to ask him, uh, Dr. Roberts, thank you for joining us. I wanted to ask you about what's going on, your take on oil. It looks to me like it has uh, got multiple aspects of it, not only attacking our domestic energy production, but also uh, a knife aimed straight at the jugular of uh, Putin and Russia, would you say? David, I don't, I don't really know. All I know for a fact, if news reports are correct, and you never know if that's true either, that the <clears throat> OPEC, or the Saudis primarily, mm -hmm. Normally, when you have a recession and the demand for oil drops and the price starts going down, in the past, the Saudis restrict their output. They cut back the production in order to reduce the fall in the price. So they protect the price by restricting output when the demand falls. That's their normal behavior. This time, this is not happening, apparently if news reports are correct, but of course I'm not connected uh, to the oil industry and have no independent information about it. So for if news reports are correct for the first time or for an unusual incident, the Saudis are not restricting output as the demand falls and so the price is going down. Now the effect of this uh, of course is um, devastating for the American fracking industry. Mm -hmm. You might remember that in order to uh, get uh, fracking underway and give fracking companies the ability to override community concerns, homeowner concerns, uh, to uh, override people's concerns with surface water and, uh, and groundwater, uh, the industry promised 100 years of energy independence. In other words, they created this impression that the United States would no longer have any imported energy, that we would have a century of our own energy. And uh, by making these kinds of claims and establishing this kind of uh, attitude, they were, over to, they were able to override the real objections to fracking. Now, that, all, of, all of that fracking started with a much higher oil price. Mm -hmm. The price falls down like it, like it does. This industry it doesn't pay. The costs are higher than the price. And so you could look at this as the Saudis were taken in by this propaganda. Uh, I've seen various reports from people who claim to be experts that at best there was 20 years. Uh, from fracking, not a hundred. Now maybe the Saudis were taken in, they didn't want to lose uh, their market, so they're just driving these companies into the ground. That's one explanation. Uh, another explanation that people uh, uh, advance is that we've hired the Saudis to put the pressure on Russian uh, revenues by driving down the price of oil because the Russian economy is dependent in some ways on the sale of oil. And so the price of oil is driven down. And generally, all energy prices tend to move together. So maybe it also hurts their sales of natural gas. And so this is seen as an effort of the United States to um, hurt uh, Russia's ability to resist the various US, NATO, EU pressures. 
I don't know what the answer is. Uh, the only fact we know is that for some reason the Saudis are not restricting output in order to protect the price. Well, let's look at what is going to come, regardless of what the motivations were on this. Let's look at some of the immediate uh, practical considerations that are going to come under fire here. As I talked about earlier, we've got this report from uh, David Stockman's Contra Corner. It says, uh, here comes Wall Street's latest toxic waste. He says, oil-linked notes will blow up under eighty dollars many of them and so uh, are you concerned about the derivatives market that's attached to oil yes. prices uh, and yes a lot, a lot of people are mm -hmm. um, uh, not just uh, David uh, I think that is um, a possible explosive event for the banks and it could be the reason that uh, I think it's the Citibank chairman that's been pressing uh, to uh, overcome uh, the part of the replacement legislation for Glass-Steagall mm -hmm. uh, that, uh, that um, if they can get that repeal, it lets them have access to depositors' accounts in the event there are derivative problems. Yes. So that could be one of the reasons that the Citibank chairman is uh, pressing to overturn this uh, legislation um, because the legislation, I think, requires them to move their derivative stuff into uh, subsidiaries and get it off the entity that holds the consumer deposits. That's correct. With Dodd Frank, they were supposed to separate out those uh, speculative investments away from their core banking business, which would be insured by FDIC deposits. And we've seen a lot of heavy lobbying by uh, by Diamond as well as by uh, Citibank to get this in. And it looks like uh, they got what they wanted. That's part of the budget deal that got rammed through by uh, Boehner. And of course, it's alienated even a lot of the Democrat base. They essentially have uh, alienated their voters by giving this massive gift to the bankers telling them we'll underwrite and uh, ensure your risky investments using the so, US taxpayer so Elizabeth Warren wasn't able to block it I know she was trying to block it yeah I, I think it's I, I think the deal has gone through I believe anyway the uh, that's what they're trying to do and yeah. uh, whether Whether's that's gone through or not is an indication mm -hmm. that yeah. they themselves are worried about the yes. oil derivatives uh, but there are all sorts of other derivatives. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Any of them could blow up. And uh, so what we see again uh, is that um, three or four banks control the economic policy of the United States and they control the fate of all the rest of us. Yeah, that's very true. We were talking about this uh, in the last hour. This uh, Michael Schneider went through and looked at how bad the week was last week in terms of economic metrics. And he pointed out the similarities to 2008. First, we had an oil crash, then we had a commodities crash, then we had junk bonds crashing, and then we had the stock market crashing. So all it takes when you've got this, uh, uh, this derivatives market that now, by some people's estimate, is over a quad trillion dollars worldwide, uh, when you've got uh, an economy that is only worldwide GDP is only about what 60 trillion or whatever. When you've got that much speculation out there, that that many uh, that that larger derivatives market, that it just takes one part of it to explode, and that can essentially kind of create an economic avalanche, can it? Uh, that's right. And, and remember now the the uh, recession in uh, the, at the end of 2007. Uh, this was caused by the exploding fraudulent financial instruments. Yes. Uh, this time around, it may be that the rece a recession itself causes the financial instruments to explode. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because there's every indication that not only has there never been a recovery, the recovery is a, an illusion created by um, understating inflation, overstating GDP growth, uh, overstating uh, jobs, uh, not counting discouraged workers as unemployed. The, the whole thing is, is an illusion. And it's, it's shot to pieces by the facts. For example, the Federal Reserve, it, it's just done a survey, and they found that about that, that half of 25-year-olds are back at home living with parents. Mm -hmm. 
they're either unemployed or the jobs they have are not sufficient to pay rent. <laughs> yeah, and I think that, that the fantasy that we have uh, recovered economically from 2008, I think that's really underscored by what happened with the pension plans and the fact that uh, Democrats and Republicans told us in this budget bill that they're going to give corporations the ability to renegotiate their pension commitments. That's something that has always in the past been sacrosanct. And when you look at the fact that Private companies who have made these pension commitments decades ago would now be paying them back with much cheaper dollars. Who The purchasing power has been eroded by the Federal Reserve. They're not even able to make that. What does that tell us? <laughs> uh, right. Um, of course, the, the theft of pensions goes back a long time. I think it started when Eastern Airlines was taken over. Mm -hmm. That's his name. And, um, and of course, they're... But they're already cutting back and reducing all the uh, municipal uh, workers' pensions. And yeah, exactly. Uh, government pensions have another.